Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Royce and welcome back to A Drink With Crazy. I got some inspiration for this video, so I'm kind of going to do this one on the fly. I haven't thought this one all the way through yet, but I have done other videos like that and they were okay. So I think I can pull this one off. But before we get into my half-cocked ideas of idiocy, let's introduce today's beer. This is the Toppling Goliath Limited Oktoberfest Lager, and I brought the glass back so we can get a good, nice pour there. Yes, my wife bought me a few of these. I think I drank one of these the other day for you guys. Oh, that is such a beautiful beer and such a beautiful color right there. I like my lagers. I'm a, uh, my favorite's probably ales. No, my favorite's Kolsch's, actually. If I could find a good Kolsch that somebody sold in this area, mm, boy, howdy. But this, as far as lagers go, this is a craft beer that is absolutely fantastic. And it's a small business. Well, I don't know if it's considered a small business, but it's not a megacorp that's trying to, you know, huck all kinds of ridiculous, you know, stupid flavors down your throat. Only good flavors down your throat. I'm not going to say the joke that I was thinking. Anyway, let's get into the video topic. It has been over a month and people haven't received their Ripaverse comics yet. Why? Well, I was watching Eric July uh, on his live stream, actually, just before I came. Uh, just, like, I, And that's what gave me the idea for this video. And it is staggering to me how many people don't seem to understand a lot of the logistics that go into getting a pre-order like this out. So, in Eric July's video, he covers, you know, the money that went up front, how much he has to pay his colorists, what he's doing. You know, people asked him, why was your comic so expensive, and could you sell it for this? And he goes, dude, I'd just lose my ass on if I sold it for that much. Like, you know, and the explosion that happened, like, he obviously did not expect over 40,000 people and $3.4 million worth of sales right now. So... Let's get into it a little bit. And why haven't you gotten your Ripaverse comics yet? And this is something that I think is very important for a lot of people to understand. It's why I'm doing this video is because there's... Eric has... I, I watch a lot of his... I mean, my channel is turning into a comic channel. My, my channel is turning into something that I didn't know it was going to turn into. And I'm going to roll with that. So... I have watched Eric over the last month explain to people who have super chatted him, who have asked him these questions over and over and over again, and he has to keep repeating them. And um, there, I, I want to address this as far as the consumer is concerned. Most consumers will not go and read the details of their purchase agreement, right? That purchase agreement is generally now in the in the version of a pre-order that the Ripaverse is doing is that, hey, if you give me money today, I'm going to get you your book uh, and we're going to ship it out around this time. Now, that's something that people just glossed over. Eric July came out, said, here's the Ripaverse. People went, they hit click buy. And I don't think a lot of people uh, as consumers spent the time to read and understand that, guess what? It's going to take a minute to get the book to you, which is totally fine. I've bought lots of stuff like that before. I think most of us have. Hey, you buy something, it'll be here, you know, when it's done. Especially, you know, if you've ever ordered anything off of, like, Etsy from, like, private creators and stuff. Like, I think uh, my my Vegeta picture here was actually um, from Etsy. I, 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 no, let me, let me, I won't say that. But it was from a private person. And when you order from people, you read... You know, the uh, you read, you know, what their conditions are upon purchase. Hey, you will get your item. I will, because sometimes items are handcrafted, handmade. It's a pre-order. It's going to take me X amount of time to complete your custom order or to complete this pre-order order or to do whatever we have to do. And then we will ship it out to you. Now, in the case of Eric July, what he actually did had to pivot and shift. And what he did is that so many orders came in off the bat that his, I believe his original, he was going to ship by date was like early August. And so many orders came in. He just kind of was like, what the fuck? And, when that happened, 
he came out, did a live stream, and said, here's the deal, guys. I am so sorry, but I do have to pivot here. So many orders have come in. I now have to call my printers and tell them, hey, remember how I told you, like, 10,000, 12,000 books was going to be enough? Well, yeah, now we're up to 50,000 books. Can you make it happen? And the printers were like, yeah, but we're going to need some time. And I think a lot of people don't understand the time and labor that goes into all of this. Obviously, if you order something, you go, well, I ordered my thing. And as a consumer, and Eric July actually mentioned this in his video, you as the consumer don't think of the back end of the process. You don't think, you just click order and I'll get my stuff in two days because Amazon says you'll get it in two days. Um, but Eric July isn't an Amazon, isn't Amazon and thank God he's not. But what a lot of people don't seem to understand is that with the overwhelming amount of people that came out to order this product and order many other products as well, right? I just ordered two books, right? I just, that's all I ordered. I ordered two books, call it, have a nice day. We're good there, which um, I'm very excited to get. But when you order those two books... He, the printers start printing them and they start getting them ready. And then he has to have people in his warehouse and in his, in his team, in his staff, because he's running his own distribution. He doesn't have, he is not using Chinese labor. He's not using Chinese slave labor to get this out to you. He's using American in-house labor to get you these books, which is fantastic. He is supporting the American economy and the American worker. And what that means is they have to print the book. They have to send the book to him. He then has to take the book. He has to bag, board, and put the book in the box. Now, that's going to take time, effort, and energy. Now, he said himself, having a couple of people that he knows close, uh, that are close friends of his to bag and board, you know, 10,000 books, he's like, that's not a bad thing. But when you get 50,000 books plus shirts plus all this other stuff, it scales up to a point where he needs to find help. That brings me into my next point, okay? The labor market right now is utter fucking trash. As a construction worker, as somebody who has been in, I have been in the natural gas field. I've now been in uh, uh, civ the civil construction world for over a year. I was in the natural gas field for nine years. I was in the oil field before that for a year. The amount of people who are not willing to do their fucking jobs is staggering. And one of the things that Eric July is having so much trouble finding is people that say, yeah, I want to do the job. And then look at an order ticket and go, okay, one book, one t-shirt, one set of Dokumon cards. And that's the fucked up part about this whole situation is that he is trying to build a business and he is pulling from probably the laziest generation of Americans thus far. And so he could hire somebody and he has to make sure that they actually have a good pedigree behind their name. Hey, I worked in this. I worked in retail. I know how to do this. I was a shipping manager, blah, blah, blah. He's probably got to make sure that he goes through all of that stuff to verify that somebody is smart enough to look at a ticket and go, one book, one shirt, some Dokumon cards, you know, something else, a, a, a hat. And they go, okay, that order's done. We close up the box. We put the label on. It's ready for shipping. The problem is, is I know so many people. I see people. I see the revolving door of laziness, especially in the construction industry, that nobody wants to talk about in this country. It, it's so funny. People say, I want more money. I want more money. I want more money. And everybody goes, and everybody on like my side of like the political aisle is like, well, the jobs are out there. Why don't you go get them? And the problem is, is that these people are like, well, I don't want to do that. Or, well, but, well but, but if I want to work for this construction company, I can't smoke weed. I can't do drugs. It's like, well, then you don't want to make the kind of money that you can make. And this is what Eric July is dealing with. And this is something that I am so fucking passionate about that I, I just, I, it bothers me. I have seen so many people who come in and they work, like, not even that fucking hard. Like, they're lazy when they're at the job. And then two weeks later, they quit. Because they can't fucking handle it because somebody came up and said, dude, you didn't do that right. That's not what I told you to do. That's not, 
the specific task that I needed you to do. Why are you doing this other thing? And people go, I'm out. I'm, I, I bounce. That's the labor market right now. Okay? You don't have people who have enough personal responsibility in them to say, I am going to do the best work that I possibly can in order to make sure that I accomplish my goal for the company that I work for. And this is something that is affecting everywhere. It's infecting everywhere. This is the laziness that is pervasive across the entire labor market. And I have seen it for years. I've been talking about it with people for years. And yet Eric July keeps getting asked, how come I don't have my book yet? And he goes, y'all motherfuckers ordered 50,000 books from me. I thought like maybe like 10,000 books, which that's a fucking huge amount, by the way. Like 10,000 is not a small amount. If you had $10,000 in your savings account that you didn't have, dude, I would be like, I wouldn't even be worried about shit if I had 10 G sitting in my fucking savings. I think I got $25 in my savings account right now. So 10,000 books is a large amount of books. And he sold five times that. So for everybody out there wondering, why don't you have your books yet? Why hasn't shipping happened yet? Why are these things not happening in the timeline that I set for myself? Because you're not the one that fucking sets the timeline. Eric July came out on the Ripperverse website and told you guys, here are the conditions of your purchase. This is how it's going to go down. You're going to send me the money now. I'm going to get you the, the book later. He had to do a pivot. He said, guys, we got so many orders that we will not be able that we, and actually it's not that they wouldn't be able to. And well, I think that was part of it, but I think he was more like, we want to make sure that everybody gets their books close together. Cause he doesn't want people getting their books a month apart from each other. He wants everybody to be getting their books around the same time, which I just think is respecting the customer to a certain extent, to a certain extent. Cause I know people, well, no, if you order it at this time, you should get it at this time. I understand that, but the comic books and the FOMO, and I already did the FOMO and business stuff, but this is why you haven't gotten your books yet. And guess what? It was completely upfront with people. And I, I, I don't understand how people are still asking this question. It's like when I make a purchase, when I go to you know, Amazon or eBay or, or wherever, I go and I read the seller's purchase. Hey, if you order from me, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to get your money. I'm going to create a shipping label. I'm going to send it out on this date. You should receive a confirmation when I do that. It'll get to you on this date. And then some people will be like, they're going to check up on you and see if you got your order, right? People think that they set the order of operations for when they purchase something and they don't. The businesses are oftentimes upfront about the order of operations and when you will get your product. And most people don't care to read them. I have seen, I know people that work in sales. I know people that work in retail. And so many people come in and they are completely oblivious to how transactions work. And this is why you haven't gotten your book yet. Because if you read what's going on with the Ripperverse website and what's going on and stayed an informed customer, you, would, you wouldn't have to ask these questions. And I'm doing this video because I've heard Eric ask these questions, answer these questions so many times that I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand why people are still asking these questions. Be an informed customer read what's happening. If you sent your money to somebody, go back, check to see if there's an update, if there's something that changed that would, you know, delay the time of shipment for your order and the receiving time that you would get it. Check those things out. I am so fucking sick of the lazy customers who have no idea how to handle a transaction on one end. They just think I give money and and why don't I have my stuff in two days? Because they didn't read, you know, the transactional agreement. Or on top of that, what Eric July is dealing with, and he has to scale up his business real quick, and he's got to find good help. And good help is in short supply. 
Help is in massive supply, but there's a lot of that help that you don't want. And I've seen it, and I've witnessed it, and I witness it in my own day job. That's why the Ripperverse books have been delayed. But thank you all so much for checking out A Drink With Crazy. We are at 520 subscribers, and it you, it's just coming. You guys are just... I, I think this channel is going to grow faster than I am prepared for it to do. I also think that I am going to cover a topic that is going to make this channel grow intensely faster than I am, am, am prepared to handle. And with that being said, I love all the comments you guys are putting down. I You guys are liking the videos. Share the videos for me if you would, please, and thank you. But never forget, I just enjoy this. This has been so amazing. And the community that has gathered here on A Drink With Crazy. You guys are nothing less than fantastic human beings. And you have all been so civil in your discourse. And so fantastic in the way that you speak with each other. And that means a lot to me. So thank you all so much for checking out A Drink With Crazy. Hopefully you don't mind my rant here, but I had to get that off my chest. And I will see you next time right here on A Drink With Crazy. Cheers, everyone. Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.